Hi everyone, Kate from Crocoblock is here and welcome to this new video overview of the Jet Engine plugin update. Our developers prepared some really cool features that actually you've been requesting for quite some time already, and I'm pretty sure that they will be a great helping hand for you in your projects. If you like our videos, go ahead and show us some love by clicking on that like button below and subscribing to our channel to stay updated on the new interesting tutorials. So guys, shall we get started? Let's start off with a really cool feature that now allows us to enable quick editing of specific meta fields for CPT and CCT. Just open the settings of CPT you're working with, scroll to the meta fields section, pick a meta field you'd like to enable this option for, let's say pricing. Scroll way down and toggle Quick Edit Support option on. Repeat the same procedure with other fields you like. And just feel that nice vibe of speeding things up in your workflow. And the same thing goes for CCT2. Just open it. Toggle Quick Edit Support for Required Fields. Save the changes. And enjoy this cool breeze in the wind of change. As for now, this option is available for text, date, time, date time, text area, checkbox, but only when the option save as array is enabled, radio, select, and number. Ready to move on? Yes, guys, right now finding required posts from the endless list of all the post items becomes much easier. If you scroll way down to the bottom of the custom post type settings, you'll find a new section, admin filters. Basically, here's the place where you can create filters for your CPT admin panel and filter the posts either by taxonomies or metadata. Just enter the name of the filter, specify if you want to use it as a placeholder or not, pick the type of the data to filter by, let's say by taxonomy, select the exact taxonomy from the list and decide whether to show post count or to keep it disabled. Save the changes and check your CPT for the new cool filter. Pick the country right here and click on the filter button. Easy and fast, right? Now we see only the posts that belong to this particular country. And the same goes for the metadata. Let's add another filter for pricing. Toggle the use name as a placeholder on. Pick the type filter by metadata. Select the meta field to filter posts by pricing in my case. And choose the option source select from database. Also, we have this custom meta field option that allows you to enter the custom meta field name manually. Just please keep in mind that this meta field will override the previously selected one, okay? So, save the changes and check out this nice little filter in action. Let's say we want to see the posts of this particular price and from that country. There you go, works perfectly fine. Okie dokie, let's move on to the next feature. 
Yep guys, with Jet Engine 2.10 update, Metabox has gained a new super cool option, visibility conditions. From now on, you can either show or hide Metaboxes depending on the user role or taxonomy terms. So for example, I want to add this Metabox to the products of a specific category, audiobooks. In the visibility conditions section, I'll have to first pick a post type where this meta box will be shown, which is products. But keep in mind that here you can select multiple options. Then simply click on the new condition button and select a condition from the list. In my case, it's post has taxonomy terms. Here, I'll select the products category and set the term audio books. Let's update the meta box and see what changes have been applied to our posts. So, if I open a post that belongs to an audiobook category and scroll a bit down, here I'll find a new meta box we just created. But if I open a post that belongs to the paper book category, for example, I'll find no such field whatsoever. So you can as well add multiple conditions such as include or exclude meta box for posts individually by name and include or exclude meta box for exact user roles admin, editor, and so on. This was a good one, right? <laughs> okay, so let's proceed with the next feature. And last but not the least, we've saved a little cherry and pie for our Gutenberg users. We decided to widen the range of dynamic functionality within the Gutenberg block editor, not just by having our dynamic blocks in it, such as dynamic field, dynamic link, dynamic image, and so on, but also by adding dynamic content support to such blocks as paragraph, heading, cover, and buttons. So let's say I want to create a listing with REST API endpoint as a source. Here, I can place a two-column block, add a cover block into the first column. Over here at the top is the new dynamic content icon. And once I click on it, it'll give me the opportunity to select appropriate options. For example, I'll choose image URL, image source, REST API, photo meta field, as for the second column, here I'll place a heading block. In the data source, I'll choose the current object property. And in the property itself, it'll be REST API ID meta field. Now I'll duplicate this block twice and select the first name field for the heading block. and the occupation field for this one. And what else I will do, I will add a buttons block too and choose the following settings. Text, source, current object property and property email meta field. Now I'll just do some minimal styling Change the width of the columns. Set sizes. And text color. as well as change the default button style. Let's update the changes. Okay, and right here is the page with the listing grid of REST API endpoint items we just created. 
Some of you might ask, why does it not show the actual data in the editor? And what are these percent signs and content, percent signs and tags? No worries, guys. This is not a bug or a mistake. This has been done on purpose, actually, just not to overload your admin panel and the editor itself with unnecessary requests. So just pay attention to the settings you choose and enjoy the best of the simple blocks with the dynamic content support enabled. Thank you so much for staying with me and learning about these new cool options. And also let me know in the comments which one of these features you plan on using the first in your projects. I hope this video was useful and if so, don't forget to give it a like and join our friendly Facebook community. Cheers guys!